It's a killer new week up in the Nintendo hood because they finally revealed what they've been working on all this time. The slow start, the elongated silence, we now know. Plus, there's so many games coming out, I don't know what to do with myself, and I bet you don't either. Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. How was the Zelda weekend? I know it was Memorial Day weekend, but I also know that in reality, for a lot of you, it was just, now I can cram 72 hours of Tears of the Kingdom into one straight, consistent period. Hope your couches are doing well. Remember, change out the pillows. It helps to fluff things up when you're sitting in the same spot glued to creating your Ultron robot inside of Tears of the Kingdom build mode. I got the Nintendo news for you, and I've got a lot of interesting things to tell you about, so thanks for being here. Hope your week is starting off great. If not, my job to make it better. I will take that responsibility. The onus is me. Not your mom, not your significant other, not your teacher, not your pet. Me. And Volvi. First off, I want to tell you that Street Fighter 6 is getting incredible reviews, saying it's the best fighting game package of all time, and that is challenging fighting words for Mortal Kombat 1, which the Switch gets. I'm pulling for Mortal Kombat 1 because the Switch gets it. Remember the era where we got Street Fighter 4. Now we have a really amazing, insanely successful system, and we don't get Street Fighter 6. I feel like that's a bit of a, of a hurt. It's a bit of a hurt. Capcom hasn't really loved up on Nintendo Switch all that much. Well, they did with Monster Hunter and Mega Man, but Street Fighter, no say. Though we did get Street Fighter 4, 3D edition, which I bought and played on launch night. Any of you play a lot of 3D Street Fighter on the 3DS? Probably not. Uh, but maybe what you'll play is the Summer Games Mess game with me. And this is pretty darn awesome because despite Nintendo not wanting to have a traditional E3 timeframe showcase, there are a bunch of showcases coming up next week that will feature Switch games. And this is fantastic news because we'll get to hear about new upcoming titles, and I bet you many of them will release in late 2023. I know oftentimes these are like far off titles and just mood trailers, but really the industry is in this mode right now where we announce something a couple months before it's out and boom, we have a date, we're ready, we go, we don't deal with delays and we don't deal with unmet expectations. So it kicks things off next week with the Gorilla Collective on June 7th, Summer Games Fest kickoff is June 8th, I think there will be a few Switch things there. I would not expect to see a ton from Jeff Keighley in terms of Switch games. Nintendo is definitely not a partner of Summer Games Fest, and typically, outside of maybe some indie stuff that's also on Switch, there's not going to be a big Switch announcement. But then later on June 8th, we do have Day of the Devs, which should have some Switch stuff, and then this. Volvi! Devolver Digital's beloved mascot. Star of all your favorite Devolver games, spinoffs, and shows, finally steps back into the spotlight this summer, the return of Volvi. I'm back, gamers. <laughs> We're going to watch this live because childhood, man. Ch we got a nostalgia Mandela effect. Something about that hand, it brings back memories I don't think I want to remember. Volvi is back. Do you remember Volvi? Did you play any of Volvi's games? I mean, there's the one where Volvi got really good graphical upgrade. He's kind of looking at you really spookily in like a 3D font. There's the Volvi with the nice pixel side scrolling. It was a Metal Slug style game. There's the Volvi, which kind of has like Cult of the Lamb style art. It actually was the, the prequel to Cult of the Lamb before that developer became popular. Um, there's the Volvi where he's in the field. I think that one was more of like a life farming sim. And then there's just sort of the straight up old school side scrolling platformer Volvi. There's an RPG as well. There was an RPG for Volvi as well? I definitely did not play that one. Volvi though, bros. And sisses. And everybody else. I don't know if I like Volvi, but June 8th, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific, we're gonna have freaking Devolver Digital Return of Volvi. Devolver puts out some of the coolest Switch indies. And remember, they have Plucky Squire, which should get a date at this thing. They have the one about Big Kicking, Bigfoot. What is that called? I don't know. The Little Kick. They've got a bunch of other titles that are coming, including Gunbrella. <laughs> including Pepper Grinder. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop with the hand motions. Just a, a lot of energy today. Um, it is, though, going to be one of the best showcases of the summer for Switch stuff. Honestly, Devolver does put out fantastic titles, and no matter your opinion on Volvi, yes or no, plus or minus, um, I think that's one that's absolutely worth watching. It just got announced this morning, like an hour ago, and I'm very hyped for it. Seeing Volvi will be 
you know, difficult, but we'll do it for the announcements and hopefully some good release dates. We were expecting like Pepper Grinder or uh, Gunbrella at the last Indie World. It didn't happen, so I'm hoping for it here. Furthermore, beyond that announcement, we do have like Tribeca Games Festival, uh, Wholesome, you got OTK, and then you have the big one towards the end, which is the Ubisoft Forward on June 12th. Now, Ubisoft in the past has been decently supportive of Nintendo, and I bet my butt that they will have Rayman, uh, Mario Rabbids news here. We recently saw the trailer or the teaser for the upcoming Mario Rabbids DLC. Should get more of that, but I bet they show off a little bit of the Rayman stuff in the Ubisoft forward. So if you want to tune in for that, I don't know that we'll get any new Switch game announcements from Ubisoft. I feel like their support has wavered to the point of like, we gave you Mario plus Rabbids, shut up. But I think it's still worth watching because I do hear, think we'll hear about the DLC launch date for the mid part and then for the third part of the season pass, the Rayman part, we should get a tease of that. Um, but there's a lot of interesting things that you can check out, and even if you're not like into Xbox or PlayStation, still lots of Switch stuff. And even, for example, at the Xbox Game Showcase, they had Hollow Knight last year, and that's a humongous thing for Switch. So there's always a chance. I don't think next week is going to be as sad as you might stumble upon uh, if you are a Switch-exclusive gamer. But just, yeah, the Volvi one, maybe we should watch it together for, for emotional support. But one more date on the Summer Games Mess that I want to add in here is the 83rd annual meeting of the shareholders for Nintendo. And this is their chance to go in and unveil what they've been working on, what's going on, what's going to happen. Do the shareholders care that all that's coming is Pikmin 4 and who knows when Metroid Prime 4? Two fours and that doesn't equal eight. We do have a glimpse before June 23rd of what Nintendo's been working on and I want to talk to you about it now because I'm personally blown away. You know I'm a humongous fan of new, of fresh, of sizzle, of zazzle. I just love this spectacle and I love when Nintendo goes all out. I love when they decide that they're going to really impress us with what they've been working on. And this is no slouch. This is no different. And this shows Nintendo really has been putting the work in. They've kept their noses to the grindstone. While we thought there's nothing coming, while we thought it's just TOTK and TOTK, I mean just that is enough, they have not faltered. Development has not ceased. Effort has not been stymied. This is what they've been working on. Without further ado, drum roll please. Countdown please. Prepare yourself please. Popcorn and rainbows, unicorns, and a big goofy smile. Nintendo's big project of 2023. This changes everything. It's how? How did they make it happen in that little time? You know, they had the February Direct. They didn't show it off there, okay? They've had multiple opportunities to like Twitter drop, nothing there. And this is what they've made. They've revolutionized gaming with something that no other company could possibly have put in their project. We now have the first ever multiplayer fist bump action in modern gaming say hello to nintendo because they know how to take things to the next level they know how to forward and futurize our work and i'm telling you that this industry better be grateful for nintendo what would we do without innovation like this what would we do we'd play totk and then what and then what and then what the big question is and then what after totk that is the big question and now you know now you know, and then what? Nintendo, they've been quiet. Nintendo, they've been docile. Nintendo's been sleeping, but their ears have been perked. They've been ready. They've been watching. They know what humanity needs at this time. They know the camaraderie that is important to our survival, and they know what society has been struggling with for so long now. The fist bump enters Splatoon 3. And now, now Nintendo, they get a well-deserved break. They can kick it. Shareholders meeting, eh. summer games mess, eh. direct in maybe late summer before September Gamescom. I mean, Nintendo, are you telling me that you have more than just that for the booth at Gamescom? 
Trust me, they're gonna have photo ops. You can do it too. They're gonna have demo stations. Do it with a friend. They're gonna have celebrity appearances. Come over there and meet uh, Bob Odenkirk. Boom, fist bump style in the game. Come over there. Maybe they'll bring Miyamoto. Come over there. Maybe they'll bring Steve Rule. I don't know, but they have so many opportunities to build this booth around this central idea, this new innovation, this great reveal. And I personally don't think they need anything else. Other games, 2D Mario, remakes, Paper Mario, Mario Baseball. Who needs Mario when Splatoon is doing the heavy lifting? I always knew that new IP would be Nintendo's train car to success, right? Mario has become the caboose. Splatoon has become the drive shaft. And this proves that if we're going to take Nintendo to the Switch 2 generation, if we're going to take Nintendo to that next milestone, if we're going to somehow build upon 130 million consoles, a billion dollars, blah, 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 all the software, 50 million copies of this, 40 million... The only way is with innovation like this, with ideas like this, and with fresh, hard work from developers like this. Now you know why their schedule is so light the second half. They put all the work in the first half, and they just give it to you now. My friends, go enjoy Nintendo's greatest innovation. And when you think of, you now know that that means the future of the big N. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm pretty psyched about it. In fact, I'm just downright smitten. If you can't tell, like, I've been waiting a long time for this, and I feel like it paid off. Good things come to those who wait, and so please wait for the next video. It won't be that long, though, so I think you can do it. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. Appreciate all your support. Love you lots. Switch Force, out.